Global surface temperatures have risen faster since 1970 than in any 50-year period over the past 2,000 years. As a result, we find ourselves in a state of global climate emergency and crisis. But what does this mean for South Africa and its citizens? And what do we need to do to remedy the situation for ourselves? Bahai Sudumelang, good evening. My name is Tabo Mulukwani. And welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Tonight, we'll look at the ongoing global climate emergency and crisis, what uh, we need to understand about it and what we need to do going forward to help alleviate the situation. Now, joining us in studio tonight uh, to help us discuss this better is uh, Councillor Jack Sikwaila, who is the MMC for Environment and Infrastructure Services in the city of Johannesburg. He's joining us in studio this evening. MMC, thanks very much for taking the time. Good evening. Welcome to the show. Uh, good evening, Tavo, and good evening to viewers of Soto TV. Uh, thanks for hosting. Much appreciated. I mean, you know, when we speak about global uh, climate emergency and crisis, some people might think that we're talking about big terms and stuff. Maybe let's yeah. try to unpack it from there when we talk about the global climate and emergency crisis. What is it that we are talking about for, for our viewer at home? No, you are correct. People mustn't think when you speak global, <clears throat> then we, we discriminate a particular sect of uh, countries. Mm -hmm. Global it means everybody who lives here on Earth. I think, uh, and I think maybe at some stage, it's not going to get it with us, so it's not going to be able to understand the billion. We are in a crisis. Uh, it's in a crisis, then we need an immediate intervention now than ever before. Uh, but we, we, we have started our, ourselves in the city of Johannesburg uh, with, to educate our own communities. Uh, in Soweto, three weeks ago, we have launched a program, uh, obviously supported by the C40 and the United Nations. Uh, a week ago, you know, I was also again in Soweto with another mm -hmm. program similar to this one. <clears throat> Intention to say that Rayenka Risa go, 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 We trained what communities in Soweto around the Jablani area. In our view, is that these are key stakeholders that can assist us at the ground level to then educate their own communities as, as uh, what committees. So we've capacitated them uh, three weeks ago. So we are expecting those for them to be on the ground. <clears throat> now, it is a crisis because look where we are. Uh, ecosystem is now heavily imbalanced. Yeah. We are experiencing, and now we can tell the weather today is very windy, but August is gone. Those things are happening, you know, our winter is becoming uh, warmer. Uh, rain will start in a different era than we, we, we normally have. So we think that uh, it destabilizes a lot of things, not only environment itself, but business as a result. That is influenced by weather, such as farming, uh, are obviously an impact. So this is happening very, very rapidly. Uh, the rising uh, sea levels and so on, the flood, uh, that kills a lot of people globally. Mm. then gives us a sense that hence we see this a crisis and it's an emergency then we must then attend to it very quickly so um, <clears throat> i mean i i want to understand it maybe uh, in, in in broader terms um you know you are highlighting issues of uh, um uh, the change in weather patterns and all these kind of things but how do we as a country contribute to the crisis itself i mean we've been experiencing quite heavy floods sure. uh, in the past let's say three years if i may put it that way and we recently saw some uh, you know tidbits of snow here in johannesburg also people were asking themselves how did we get here that i mean uh, a city like so, Joburg yeah. to experience such uh, heavy snow very unusual uh, for that matter but look johannesburg in itself uh, where we are contributes <coughs> largely to to to, to, to global emissions. i think uh, hence we we felt that so to largely because during apartheid time we used to call it the apartheid special planning that most abandoned mines in the southern part of Johannesburg are uh, now as a result, you know, during uh, August, wind will blow and will blow towards the, 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 the southern side where mm -hmm. people are residing. So we need to reverse those negative uh, trends, uh, you know, as the city. Uh, hence, we, we feel that community must then work with it. But those are the two contributors to it. One is that one of the abandoned mine, which I think DMRE must then come in and, and take stock with those companies that left those without, uh, you know, rehabilitated those mines. But another issue that we are also facing in Johannesburg, because of migration and, and so on, and what have you, uh, during winter time, because of a lack of affordability, I should put that way, of our own people largely in informal settlement, yeah. mushrooming, informal settlement, then he uses in Baola, 
you know, wood to heat themselves and, and cook and so on during winter. And this is a contribute very much negatively. It's highly industrialized area, Johannesburg city. So I can say that Johannesburg contributes a lot to to, to, to that. <clears throat> um, you know, just uh, before we go for a quick ad break, I mean, as ordinary citizens, obviously, at home, as we said, uh, you know, they want to understand broadly the issues, uh, as you said, that we've been using terms such as global warming and stuff. Mm -hmm. But how do we make sure? I mean, you did highlight something that our councillors also, you know, are being trained uh, sure. to understand more about um, climate change and uh, just global warming in its entirety. Uh, how do we make sure that uh, an ordinary citizen, a person who's just watching this show today understands that it's very important to take care of the environment so that you know not unnecessary dumping is not needed mm -hmm. you know all these kind of things how do we get uh, that ordinary person who's sitting at home to make sure that they keep the environment clean look through education that we are, we are also doing uh, the one i've just earlier mentioned of educating what committees we have adopted a school in Soweto. Uh, the principal agreed. We very much thank to, to him. We educated them. I think we certified, we certified them. Uh, last week, those, there were uh, seven of them. <clears throat> so those are ambassadors of, of, of uh, this clean uh, program on, on the ground. But we were intending to support them further to then educate community at large. But now, you are correct when you say that illegal dumping is, is one of the cause. I, I was in a meeting now with MEC in at uh, Robinson and Field in, 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 in uh, Tefonte. You could see from where so there's a windy waves blowing all over. I think that is uh, what we need to then assist that must arrest. But it is important uh, because uh, given take, the state that we got was that over 6 million people are dying globally as a result of this uh, infection coming from air. Yeah. So this is a global number. So 6.7, I think, if you don't miss it, but that's, that's a lot. That's a lot. Uh, so it's important. People must breathe uh, you know, clean air. We must encourage that illegal dumping, it is illegal as it is called. Uh, people must, ref must refrain from it. Let them come to us and they pick it up and uh, get those beans. Uh, but I must also indicate to you and, and viewers out there that Planting of trees is one of the best remedy long term in dealing with this issue of clean air and quality air that we are breathing. MMC, I want us to take a quick air break. When we continue, uh, we look at the ongoing emergency and crisis, you know, uh, climate crisis, and look at how Johannesburg is contributing to it. We will uh, touch base also with the MMC just to, uh, you know, get deep into this discussion. Let's take a quick air break. We're coming back after this. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. Uh, still in studio with us is Councillor Jack Sequaile, the MMC for Environment and Infrastructure Services in the city of Johannesburg. And we continue our conversation on the global climate emergency and crisis. The MMC is still with us in studio. MMC, thanks for staying on. I mean, you highlighted a very important, um, uh, you know, project that we need to embark as a public planting of trees uh, i want us to expand on that how important is that and maybe are there any uh, you know um initiatives that you as the city of Joburg will be embarking on in making sure that you advocate for uh, you know the planting of trees because it seems like you know mm. certain places i mean you highlighted something that in the desert uh, yeah. You know, you don't see rain there because sure. there are no trees. Mm. How important is having <clears throat> those trees, you know, particularly in a city like Joburg? Trees are important part of the ecosystem globally. Uh, look, in Brazil, they speak about rainforest. Uh, simply because a huge amount of land, uh, trees all over the place. Then as a result, the balanced ecosystem dictates that rain will forever be there. So I think that's what our people must then understand. Look, uh, the previous uh, mayor, Pakistan, you know, uh, went in as far as planting trees in areas of Soweto and encouraging community that time. I think this is what we must then uh, re-establish and fresh, encourage planting of trees. We have experienced through uh, the Cleaner Josie uh, program that uh, I've been championing. Uh, now, what I'm saying to councillors on the ground is that if there's an open land space where people are using it for dumping, let's repurpose the, the place. Whether we do a park, if not possible, what we can do immediately is to do a garden there. That is led by community uh, 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 people. Or else we plant trees. The one I had in the inner city around, uh, uh, you know, around the Bezidon Hout, yeah. we once had a cleanup campaign there. So then I've repurposed the space. Uh, we did some, uh, put some trees there. 
which I think a local NGO, they're the one in charge of those trees, keep on uh, putting water and making sure that people don't come uh, and do return again. So trees are very, very much important. We must discourage this thing of our people cutting trees all over the place and deforest. When you deforest, you are contributing negatively to the balance with the global uh, I mean, ecosystem itself. Then as a result, all, all the strange weather, as you earlier mentioned about uh, uh, snow in Johannesburg and so on, uh, we have never seen it. It's somewhere in Kazakhstan, uh, that side. But here, very rare, very strange, but it's because of this kind of. So here, government, both ourselves and community, must play our part. I mean, you touched on it earlier on that, uh, you know, um, there is obviously a plan from the city of Chobik. But I want to understand, I mean, there are quite a lot of industrial plants and, you know, uh, that obviously are polluting the air, sure. uh, you know, here in Chobik. It's an industrialized city. Uh, you've got a climate action plan as the city of Chobik, uh, you know, um, you your target is to have uh, at least a reduction of carbon emissions by at least 30% by 2030, 75% by 2040, and uh, just 100% net zero by 2050 there. The target, um, uh, uh, do you think that you'll definitely get there? I mean, given yeah. uh, the plants that we have and in some of them that are also being rehabilitated in the city of Joburg? Look, uh, there are quite a number of you know, initiatives that you must do. One of them, I think previous administration, you know, they would have uh, did some PRT via across Johannesburg. Part of it was to discourage motorists from using their own, but use this public transport. Uh, some of them are electrical powered, uh, you know, mm -hmm. nowadays, uh, you know, it's, it's the future. So it is part of that uh, to say that let's reduce this, this emission. We have just passed a bylaw in council two months ago uh, to say that uh, we, we need to penalize those who are not assisting uh, or, uh, or actually cooperating with us in terms of reducing this, including the issue around electricity, you know. Uh, you know, in ESCOM there are debates that uh, whether we should continue to use coal for production of yeah. electricity. Uh, others will say that let's go for greener uh, you yeah. know, energy. energy so that, yes. So it's an, it's an indication that uh, the country, national and both local, uh, its intention to then uh, work with UN C40 around this issue of, of uh, reducing the, the, the emission. I think, uh, so for us in the cities to say that let's go to industries. Part of this bylaw talks to industries uh, individuals who are burning waste uh, in our land fields or individuals across in townships all over. So we're not going to target a particular uh, class or so, but across the city, all resident industries, people themselves. Yeah, so but that is why we are saying that even in the production of electricity, uh, you know, we are inviting private companies who will say that, no, 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 I just give me a piece of land, uh, then uh, do solar farming. Uh, and then without using coal, it can give you so much kilowatts of electricity. So we're looking at some of those for future. So that is an effort for us to deal with the issue and commitment as a city to deal away with global uh, I, I, I mean, you, we've also recently <coughs> seen an increase in tremors in Johannesburg. Um, um, is that as a result of the changing in climate? Because people are asking themselves, sure. uh, the tremors, you know, earthquakes, it's <laughs> yeah. quite a lot. Yeah. So what <coughs> is currently happening? No, look, uh, the matter shook all of us. Uh, what happened there? Uh, you know, at some stage of our selfless pollution, we felt, no, uh, the CM just assembled a best team. Yeah. Yeah, of technicians, uh, engineers, to establish what, is, what actually happened uh, underground. There were rumors such as that, uh, you know, illegal mining and so on would have been the cause. Uh, and I said, no, but let's avoid to speculate. Let's allow them to investigate further. Well, the results came and said it's, 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 it's actually gas. But uh, uh, I think that is the understanding that we now have uh, that it was something else. Uh, but we can't uh, rule out, because in other areas like Rudeport, Port, yeah. we have seen you know sinkholes around infrastructure for ourselves in city power. I've visited one of it in Rudeport. Port. You could see a wide gap, uh, you know, uh, land drifting. <clears throat> That it tells you that this thing really it, it does. There are residential areas in Florida, for instance, that I see that they could hear some trauma happening underground. So this thing again uh, won't reach out, but then you inspect or something else. MMC, let's <coughs> take a quick head break. Uh, more of uh, Sword to today after this. We're coming back to stay where you are. 
Welcome back. Uh, you're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. My name is Tabo Mulukwani. We are almost at the end of the show. And we've been in conversation with Councillor Jack Sigwele, the MMC for Environment and Infrastructure Services in the city of Johannesburg. We have gotten a better understanding of the ongoing global climate uh, emergency crisis and how it affects uh, the country and its citizens. Now we look to see what is currently being done and what more should be done to fix uh, the, you know, the current situation as we did touch on the issue of the climate action plan for the city of Johannesburg. He's still here with us in studio. MMC, thanks very much uh, for staying on. I mean, um, recently the, there was a three-day Africa climate summit that took place in Nairobi. There obviously it's a preparation for the main one that is happening later this year. Uh, what were some of the key revelations and also, I mean, what is the message from us as a country, you know, going out there to, 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 to just on a global stage? No, look, this time around, I think Africans had a view that uh, prior to the global one in November, that will be in Dubai November this year, Africans felt that they must have their own, uh, you know, summit, discuss matters of Africa, how Africa is where it is today, and, and, and an approach going to November 1, what should Africa speak in one voice around this thing. The discussion, the findings are that we are suffering from, uh, it's just a spillage of what uh, major industry and corporate did in Africa as a whole. That mining industry will come in Africa, exploit our resources, and then get away without even rehabilitation our minds, uh, you know, in Africa as a whole. I think uh, uh, part of the discussion agreement is that uh, the UN uh, and this company should then avail resources to African countries to rehabilitate these mines. Uh, that's one thing that I think should then be discussed in that particular summit. Because we are here where we are because of not of our own likings. People came here, uh, made profit out of Africa. Uh, Africans should speak, then speak in one voice. I think uh, their approach is that the project for greener energy, solar, what, what, and so on, whatever, should be funded by the very same people who expect Africa in all the CS. Mm. And now Africa as a whole is facing all these challenges of global warming and an imbalanced uh, ecosystem in Africa. It, it doesn't only affect America, where we see floods, and also in Africa, so, uh, in Mozambique, for instance, you know, is most largely affected by this because they have a sea around them. So I think, uh, as I said, Africa must speak in one voice in that November. Uh, I think we are ready for it. But those who did this to Africa then must then assist us. I mean, recently you led a commemoration of the International Day of um, you know, Clean Air for Blue Skies, which is a global initiative aimed at improving air quality there. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about it uh, you know, just in brief uh, to tell us more about how, what is it all about and stuff. I mean, I've seen quite a lot of stats in terms of the air quality sure. globally. But yeah. you look at South Africa, we normally on the red sometimes sure. jobic sometimes changes uh, mm. becomes a bit yeah. uh, yellowish One greenish off, yeah. sometimes so uh, how do we make sure that uh, you know we 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 get just clear air if i may put it that way air that the quality that will be able to you know yeah. uh, no one won't be able to 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 it's, get sick from it if i may put it that way no we in Johannesburg with eight stations uh, air monitoring stations in Johannesburg, uh, one of it being in Soweto. Uh, as I've indicated to you earlier on, that uh, we are going to put our more, most of our attention in Soweto uh, for, for historical reasons. But I think even around the, 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 the summit that we recently had of BRICS, uh, the report we got was that around that time, the air quality was not, was not good. And then we have to investigate what are the causes and what, what if. Some of them is mining and so on. Um, others, uh, burning of landfill. I think there was a fire in one of our landfill. Then we had to arrest uh, to try to stop it. But generally, in Johannesburg, we we're not doing good in terms of that. Hence, we mm -hmm. felt that uh, for us to do this properly, we must involve communities, uh, educate them about the importance of uh, uh, environment itself, uh, stop illegal dumping, uh, plant trees, uh, then all schools must then be part and parcel of our programs of uh, educating our own society around clean air. It is very much important. Look, we we will experience very old people in Soweto to other townships that are suffering from lung disease and so on uh, will then pass on, uh, you know, prematurely because of this. 
So it's very much important that communities uh, assist us here. We'll do our part uh, by educating them and, and availing resources. But I think it's very much important. So, so, but we are hoping that one day we will breathe the very same clean, uh, very uncontaminated. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's, it's a long process, but that's, that's a journey that we're willing to take. Just lastly, before I let you go, um, how much should we give, you know, before we can start seeing some tangible change? I mean, like, obviously, South Africa, yes, we are contributing to climate change, but, I mean, mm. the results are not as far uh, as, uh, you know, uh, the Western countries, because sure. they are the ones that are really contributing to a large extent in yeah. terms of the numbers. How much should we give until we start seeing change. I know there's talks of, uh, you know, moving towards a greener economy, all these kind of things, mm. but how much should we give? No, look, in terms of the time, I can tell you, it's, it's going to be very exhaustive, uh, you know, access, access to do. It involves government, it involves business. There are resistance. <clears throat> I will just give you an example about ESCOM uh, earlier on. That there are debate, that we must find ourselves in a common ground, say that let, let, let's get, uh, get rid of this. Uh, coal and so on, but explore other green alternatives, which I think as a country we are, we are going there. Globally, you know, uh, dispute around China, around US, mm -hmm. around that, in fact, uh, they are saying that China is leading, uh, US and some things resist to be part and parcel of these global uh, entities uh, that, that regulates this, this thing. But I think uh, once regulation is there, UN must then come in and assist. Hence, we are hoping towards the, the, the uh, the COP28 uh, that we are going to in, in, in November in, in Dubai, that all countries globally must commit uh, to, to this. Uh, once there's a commitment and a political will, uh, I think from ourselves on the ground, all things should be doable. MMC, thanks very much for taking the time. I know that, uh, uh, you know, we could have expanded yeah. more on the discussion, but we'll definitely have you back on the show sure. uh, uh, next time. Thank you very much for Thanks very much time. for your time. That was uh, Councillor Jack Sigwaila, who is the MMC for Environment and Infrastructure Services in the city of Johannesburg, just giving us his insights on the continuing global climate emergency and crisis. And also just, uh, you know, talking us uh, through what can be done to remedy the situation. Uh, as we know that, uh, you know, all these countries are actually railing uh, behind uh, uh, efforts to make sure that uh, actually uh, we move towards a green uh, economy and you know all green if i may put it that way but on that note that's how we wrap it up for today's episode of soweto today remember we love hearing from you so please feel free to talk to us about this episode by simply sending us an email at soweto today at soweto tv.co.za or you can simply just uh, send us uh, a whatsapp or call us at 081-531-8857 from myself and the rest of the team good night and thank you for watching